Welcome everybody. This is the start of the greatest week of the year. This is a great tradition that we have. I hope you take part in all the homecoming activities. Thank you for making this America's greatest homecoming and go folks. I am so excited to continue this tradition that kicks off the greatest week of the year. So I have the privilege of counting us down. Three, two, one, dye that fountain orange. Several decades ago, there was a student by the name of Travis Burson who pitched the idea of dyeing the homecoming fountain orange, or the library fountain orange, as a way to show our orange pride, you know, at homecoming. Um, there's a very delicate mixture of dye plus hot water that gets mixed up before we dye the fountain, and we allow the homecoming executive team to pour the first cups of dye into the fountain, and they use Eskimo Joe's homecoming cups to do that. So every year the tradition gets a little bit bigger, um, and now we have a pretty large crowd that comes out to watch us dye the fountain uh, the Sunday before homecoming. But it's really fun to see it. Um, it happens pretty quick. It only takes about 10 minutes, and then it's America's brightest orange fountain, um, and then lots of people taking selfies with it. So it's a really fun and really colorful tradition to help us kick off homecoming week. The executives will all have our own individual cups of dye. Um, we pour it all in at once, and that's kind of the unofficial start of homecoming. Um, we've already started with a couple events prior to that, but that's just kind of one that everybody recognizes as that's when it begins. Um, and the fountain will be uh, dyed orange for the entire week of homecoming. Um, so that's why we started on Sunday. We go Sunday to Saturday for that. Um, and it's pretty cool because we'll have Pat, Pistol Pete there. We'll have the Homecoming Royalty Corps. Um, President Hargis will come out and he'll speak. Um, so it's just really neat because a lot of the families and community come out to uh, see that and also the sign competitions going on in Library Lawn just in front of that. So they, they're also able to go out and look at that as well. Hi, I'm Coach Gundy with Oklahoma State University. With approximately 900 Oklahomans waiting for a life-saving transplant, I encourage everyone across the state to make the important decision to be an organ, eye, and tissue donor. So check your driver's license for the Little Red Heart. If it's not there, visit lifeshareok.org and join the registry today. I have the Little Red Heart. Do you? to benefit local nonprofits here in Stillwater, but as you can tell, a fun event for everyone involved. Are you guys having fun? Yes! What have you been doing tonight? Eating candy and eating kayaks! The chili cook-off, it was fun. I liked um, tasting everyone's chili and seeing how ours compared to it and seeing how people really liked ours too. If you've ever been to Harvest Carnival, you'll see how happy the kids are and how much they love. Uh, these interactive games that the student organizations create. And then, I mean, who doesn't like a chili cook-off as well? Uh, that's a competition amongst the student organizations. Um, they'll cook up to two quarts of chili, and so you can go around with a small cup and eat all of the chili, and whichever one you like the best, you can go back and get a big bowl of. A lot of people don't know that Harvest Carnival was actually the event that began OSU's homecoming tradition way back in 1913. So even before we had something called homecoming, we had an event called Harvest Carnival, which was in the fall, obviously centered around uh, Oklahoma a and agricultural programs and involved the Stillwater community as well. So we've kind of transformed that. I think the most neat and important thing about Harvest Carnival and Chili Cook-Off is that it's one of homecoming's biggest philanthropies. So uh, entry into the Harvest Carnival is a donated canned good, uh, which when compiled all gets donated to the Harvest 2 food drive in Stillwater. 
and every year uh, Harvest Carnival normally contributes at least a quarter of their annual food sales just in one day alone. So that's, that's a really exciting way for us to give back to the Stillwater community, which obviously helps us support homecoming. question the biggest event and tradition during OSU's homecoming week. It started back in the 1920s when sorority houses would put simple door decorations up and now it has transformed into these huge elaborate house decorations made by the Greek community. All Night Pomp was yesterday started at 3 p.m. They went all night pomping and setting up these house decorations until 3 p.m. today. Then at 5.30 the streets were closed and tens of thousands of OSU fans came out to enjoy the house decorations. It's just really cool seeing, I mean, it's the, the epitome of the cowboy family and the cowboy spirit. And I think it's really uh, a unique event that um, every cowboy can really remember and uh, cherish. This year we actually had two less weeks of homecoming, so it's definitely kind of trying to get everything done together, thrown together at the last minute. But um, it takes about, um, I think we had eight weeks this year to put all of the pomping together. So we have chicken wire set up in the basement and you take tissue paper with a pencil and you stick it in. And so um, we did that and then the guys weld everything, get the moving parts together. The homecoming directors though start in February, but we don't start until August. And so it's a long process and it's so exciting to see it come together. And um, especially as a senior, being the last year, you're kind of just sad that it's the last year, but it'll be fun to come back as an alumni. So that's what makes it worth it. And you get to see everyone else's houses. Why do you think that OSU is America's greatest homecoming? I mean, check out these decks. It's an incredibly big deal uh, for the Greek houses and they take immense pride in all of the long hours that the, uh, the houses put in building their decorations in terms of putting up all the steel and doing the engineering for it. Um, if you've never seen them doing the actual pomping, that's a story in and of itself because there are computer programs that they use to create all the different colors and gradients and shading. And we're talking, you know, little pieces of tissue paper and holes that are a quarter of an inch um, wide. And yet these house decks are, you know, covering up an entire Greek house. So it's a tremendous undertaking. They take immense pride in um, at least placing, uh, certainly in, in the house decoration uh, category for homecoming, and then also sweepstakes. So, um, you know, homecoming would not be what it is today without walk around and without the, the Greek neighborhood and the Greek organizations doing what they do for, for house decks. Homecoming and Hoops is the official pep rally of Oklahoma State's homecoming week, and every year it does not disappoint. Gallagher Ibe Arena is packed with OSU fans, students, alumni, families coming back. And this place is absolutely electric from music, videos, skills from the basketball players and the wrestlers. We had a uniform unveiling and then a couple more surprises. <laughs> How was the experience for you? Um, it was a great experience. You know, we got to see you know the fans and everybody was really rowdy. So um, you know, it was just a great, great experience to come out here and you know be with the team and be on the floor. You know, for the first time. You know, we're gonna work hard and you know it's gonna be tough. You know, now but when the games come around, you know that's when it starts to get a lot easier and you know more fun. But you know, right now it's kind of like the training camp. Coach Coop likes to say, um, but we're working hard. You know, we're making strides every single day you know, as a team and as a unit. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to the season. What about Coach Gundy and Mason Rudolph taking their shirts off to kind of kick things off? Yeah, I actually didn't see it, but I heard about it. And, like, we were in the back, and I just heard a, a row. Like, the whole gym just started erupting. I'm like, what happened? And somebody said, like, Mason took his shirt off. So I was like, all right, figures. The pomping thing was just amazing to me, like, how they did, you know, all those different, you know, images with tissue paper. So, you know, I tip my hat off to the sororities and frats for doing that because 
I, I, I bet it took a lot of time, and it was really nice. What do you think about homecoming at Oklahoma State so far? I think it's a huge, huge deal, and if you didn't come, then you should come next year because it's an experience that you'll remember forever. When I'm grown up, like 50, I'll probably come to homecoming and hoops at OSU. <laughs> so much fun. I mean, we played basketball, but we also got to see a lot of activities, like saw the cheer squad for the first time, got to see Mason's shirt come off, <laughs> Coach Gundy's shirt come off. I mean, got to see the mullet. It was a crazy experience. I loved it so much. I mean, was your mouth just uh, completely dropped whenever the Mason and Gundy shirts came off? I mean, I was in shock. I was pretty surprised, like impressed by Gundy. I mean, I see you. He kind of had a six pack showing a little bit. I mean, I think homecoming in hoops is really uh, an exciting way for us to bring homecoming into gallagher Iba Arena and also to showcase what the Cowboy and Cowgirl basketball teams are going to be doing in the upcoming season. Um, we used to have a pep rally out on Library Lawn for many years and it only got bigger from there when we moved it into gallagher Iba. So um, the students love packing the stands, the alumni get to come inside and experience you know, the rowdiest arena in the country. We get to introduce the homecoming executives and the royalty court and then also everybody loves seeing the basketball teams compete. Um, on Eddie Sutton Court as well. So it's a really fun way to get excited um, after walk around if you're not already excited, but to really get pumped up for the game the next day. It's kind of cool getting to see uh, some of the players, some of the new freshmen kind of go out there and see what they're going to be made of for the basketball season. I look forward to that. I'm a big sports nerd, so. Um, but we also uh, will have um, our royalty court. We'll have a video kind of showcasing them as well as the executives. And then at the end of it all, we'll also announce the winners up until that point from the Harvest Carnival, from the Chili Cook-Off, um, Orange Reflections, which is a residential hall competition, uh, sign competition. So people kind of start to get an idea of where they're at in the sweepstakes and you can kind of see uh, them trying to figure out what they had to do in the house decoration or the float competition to make their run. So it's kind of fun. The Baylor Bears. Baylor has won three in a row against Oklahoma State. But today on Homecoming in Stillwater, Mason Rudolph and his senior classmates look to complete a successful bear hunt for the first time in their Cowboy careers. Smith gets a snap, play action pass, back to pass, hit, fumbles a football. It's loose near midfield and Paul Walter Shine recovers a fumble for the Cowboys. Pass towards the sideline, that's complete. Marcel Aitman down the sideline to the end zone, touchdown. Throws it deep down the near side, the pass is caught by McCluskey in the end zone. Pistols firing, touchdown Oklahoma State, Jalen McCluskey. Hill hits the hole and this time he's down the sideline. Still on his feet, here goes Hill. Off to the races, Justice Hill, 79 yards, but a touchdown. Rudolph takes a snap, makes a handoff, running it right, bounces off a tackle, trying to get into the end zone, and he's in. Pistols firing, touchdown Oklahoma State, Mason Rudolph. Hands it off to King up the middle, leaps up with a pile and takes it into the end zone. Pistols firing. Amendola's kickoff is deep and end over end, and it's fielded by Williams to the 20 and drilled down hard at about the 21. That's Chance Cook with about the third violent tackle in the kickoff coverage unit. Rudolph on the slant to Washington. James Washington. Stiff arm, Washington. Tight rope to the end zone. Touchdown. Spin throws. Intercepted. Jesse Akin. There goes Cardinal for the touchdown. 40 yards. Fourth down and five, and Brewer gets the snap. Scrambling right. Now throws down the right side. The pass is intercepted. Top ball. Setting day for the Oklahoma State offense. And Oklahoma State 59 16 victory over Baylor. The Cowboy Program, which is our fundraiser for the golf team, and 
Um, on down, we did a live spot here during the walk around and um, hoops last night and parade this morning. So it's just been uh, definitely a full schedule, but uh, we've, we've enjoyed every, every moment. I think homecoming weekend is, you know, when, when people see it, I think they understand a little bit more about what Oklahoma State is, what it stands for, the family, and um, the amount of people that come back and turn out for the walk around to the parade this morning. Um, you, always, you always feel like you either know people in the crowd or, or people that are out there, um, and if you don't, it doesn't feel like you're very far removed from them. There's, uh, you're gonna know some, there's gonna be a mutual friend or someone in common. I mean, it's it is a it's a big family, um, and I I got to be a part of that for two years, and um, that was long enough to make it a you know ongoing and, and enough for the lifetime. Everybody knows that game day at Oklahoma State is a really big deal. Um, Stillwater is painted orange. People are tailgating and everyone is just excited for the football game and homecoming really just adds upon that. So we have the Sea of Orange Parade in the morning in downtown Stillwater before the homecoming game. That's always very exciting. Um, that's a really big deal for alumni are coming back, especially when Ricky Fowler is going to be the Grand Marshal. There are certainly lots of different homecomings across the country. Um, there are lots of schools who fight to claim the oldest homecoming celebration in the nation. There are several who would probably try to claim the biggest homecoming celebration in the country. OSU likes to claim the greatest for a number of reasons. Um, first off, there are not many schools who have as many hundreds of students involved in planning their homecoming celebration, and that's just on a committee. That's not including all of the hundreds and thousands of Greek students in residential life and student orgs who put in all the work just so that the alumni can experience homecoming as we know it today. Um, there is certainly not a tradition left in the United States like walk around where we can close off the streets and have 80,000 people come um, the day before the football game, not even the day of the game, to see all the incredible house decorations. There's several schools across the country who have lost traditions like that. So I think combining walk around, which is the spirit that Cowboys have for their alma mater, really makes us America's greatest homecoming celebration. What homecoming means, um, I really think it encapsulates the Cowboy spirit. Um, because we might not always have the best football or basketball teams. We not, might not always be the most successful in any one area, but um, the cowboy spirit is unwaving. Um, it's always going to be there and it's something that really brings the entire community of Stillwater and the entire cowboy family together. And that's, that's what homecoming is. Um, whether you're a four-year-old hoping to become an Oklahoma State cowboy one day going around, um, watching the Sea of Orange Parade, or you're an alumni that was here 50 years ago, coming back and seeing your old classmates. Um, it's just a chance to bring all the Cowboys together again.